Welcome everyone to Wireless Field Day 7 at the uh, Cisco San Francisco Innovation Center. I wanted to welcome each of the delegates on behalf of Cisco and Meraki. We're really happy to have you here. We have a fairly exciting agenda lined up for you. We're going to start with a one hour presentation on a Meraki update and then we're going to follow that up with the Cisco Enterprise side of the house. Um, we're going to start with a Meraki product update, also an integration update with regards to how Meraki is doing as a business unit inside of Cisco. It's been about 18 months since we've been acquired. So talking a little bit about some of the growth and traction and what that looks like. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about wireless as a platform. I think as the Meraki product has evolved, we've been creating a lot of interfaces and tools for partners and customers to build applications on top of that and even business models on top of that. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. Um, Katie Lane, who uh, runs Wireless Product Marketing, is going to show you guys some demos and case studies for actual businesses and use cases for um, how wireless as a platform has been leveraged. And then we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit and focus a little bit on traffic analysis. So we'll look at the evolution of the deep packet inspection technology on Meraki access points and what that looks like and how that's evolved over time. How we went from um, inspecting kind of basic plain vanilla applications to evolving that algorithm over time. So that's going to be a more of a technical deep dive. We'll actually get into the algorithm and what that looks like. Um, and then we'll, then we'll hand it off to the Cisco side of the house. So we'll talk a little bit about ib 11 ac what that growth curve has looked like for Meraki, and then we'll um, transition over to the Cisco Enterprise side, and they'll talk about 11 ac some of the trends that they're seeing, and then we're going to actually have some of their engineers present on um, some more technical topics like multi-user MIMO and uh, RxSOP. So very exciting agenda lined up for you guys. Um, hopefully it's engaging. Please uh, stop us as you have questions. We have our technical experts here um, as, as backup as well in case I can't answer anything. So let's keep it interactive, dynamic, engaging, hopefully. Cisco Meraki. A little bit of a snapshot of how we're doing as a business unit inside of Cisco. So as you guys all know, Meraki became Cisco's cloud networking group in December 2012. And ever since then, we've seen uh, phenomenal growth. I think our growth path was, was very exceptional even prior to the acquisition. But as a result of the acquisition, we continue to see incredible traction. Across all verticals, we're seeing more than 100% year-over-year growth. And I think just the the growth curve of how many customers we have kind of speaks to that a little bit. So the software as a service value proposition is resonating very strongly across verticals. And I think it's probably worthwhile to note also that we are moving um, up market very, very rapidly. So I think at the time of acquisition, we had this kind of acquisition messaging around Meraki for mid-market. But um, I think over time, what we've seen is Meraki is applicable ac across all markets, across all use cases, especially our wireless platforms. So we've seen incredible growth and traction in large-scale campus, um, in very, very kind of uh, high-end enterprise and get accounts, which has been um, very exciting. Our Cisco channel is ramping very quickly. A lot of Cisco Gold partners on board and selling Meraki more and more effectively. Uh, we are maintaining a high-touch customer support. So all of our support teams, all of our engineering work is actually done out of this building. And as a result of our phenomenal growth, we're actually going to be growing inside this building and taking over more and more floors. So we, although we are a part of Cisco, we do kind of uh, keep our engineering support, product management, executive teams running out of this office. So there is a certain degree of autonomy in terms of decision making, ability to uh, rapidly innovate, uh, be agile, so on and so forth. And we are increasing our R&D. So very exciting time for Meraki just in terms of growth of our products. We've been adding more products over time. Um, as you guys have seen, and evolving each of those product lines. So not only are, are we going to add more hardware products to the existing product lines, but we're going to add more product lines over time, leveraging that cloud platform. So extremely exciting. Uh, in terms of wireless, one of the core updates to the portfolio um, over the last 12 months has been the evolution, not only in terms of adding the MR34, our flagship 802.11ac product, but also bringing that third radio, that security radio, into our lower end um, 11N products as well. And this has been a core differentiator for us in terms of providing uh, customers across all verticals, um, one example being retail, with that dedicated third radio for real-time intrusion monitoring, for real-time RF spectrum analysis. So that's allowed us to do more and more in terms of giving customers um, tools to analyze their RF airspace, tools for real-time rogue shoot down, so on and so forth. In terms of software, we've also continued to innovate and maintain that very rapid agility. I think um, Meraki, we, at Meraki, we really pride ourselves on leveraging that cloud model to deliver features quickly and effectively. And I think we, I, I personally like to think about Meraki features in two buckets. The first bucket being enterprise features that are driven by deal demand. So that's kind of more plain vanilla features, stuff like 
an ability to have a 2.4 only SSID. Um, stuff like 802.11 R and K, right? Stuff that you guys would probably consider table stakes. But then the other bucket is some of the more innovative features. Um, stuff that people don't necessarily ask for or they ask for in indirect ways. Um, and those features come out of exciting conversations that we have with our engineering team and they realize, hey, you know, maybe we should build deep packet inspection at the AP level. Uh, that's not something that customers were asking for four years ago, but our engineers came up with it um, over the course of several weekends, right? So uh, fairly exciting. And if you kind of think about the overall overarching theme of what's driven the development over the last uh, 12 to 18 months, it's really been features for scale. Because we really are entering markets. We're talking about uh, highly distributed sites, uh, global deployments, global enterprise deployments, nationwide retail deployments. So really the focus has been scale. How do we build tools that, for example, let you roll out a thousand networks with a couple of clicks? How do we build tools that let you, for example, white label the platform and resell it to your own customers? So if we kind of analyze these buckets, one is optimized roaming. So stuff like 802.11R and 802.11K, as well as a complete redesign of the layer three roaming architecture without an MX, right? So we were seeing a lot of kind of concerns about, hey, I don't necessarily want that MX appliance in order to do layer three roaming. So now we've redesigned that architecture. The APs will tunnel to each other automatically. Uh, richer policy management, so stuff, stuff like time-based group policies. If you're a school and you want to block access to Facebook, but only between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m., uh, that's not possible, um, and as, as well as ICE integration, which I'll talk about a little bit more in depth in a few minutes. Management and reporting, reporting by tag is my favorite. So if you have 500 sites, you can uh, go in and tag a subset of those sites and then get a report for a subset of all your networks or even a subset of one network. So if you want to report, for example, of your finance department and what applications they're using versus your marketing department and what applications they're using. So kind of more flexible reporting and management tools. And finally, a lot of exciting tools for service providers. Things like Hotspot 2.0, so we added the 802.11U standard to the access points, as well as branding and help desk integration, which we'll take a deeper look at in an actual demo. So I think, again, the core theme here is um, as we've evolved as a company and as we've moved up market and grown um, exponentially, we've found ourselves um, in, in deployments of scale, of very large scale customers, and that's what's driven this, uh, a lot of this development work, not only in terms of the hardware, but also the software. We've been working very closely with Cisco. Uh, I think we have taken a lot of feedback from the Cisco partner community, from Cisco account teams, from Cisco field teams, as well as, most important of all, customers. Um, and it's driven a lot of this work. So one of the pieces of feedback we were getting is, OK, Meraki presence versus Cisco CMX. What are the differences, right? And what we've done is we've brought all of our presence features under that overarching umbrella of the CMX platform. Um, so we've kind of. Um, align that messaging, and, and this makes it conceptually easier for customers to understand, okay, if I want CMX, if I want uh, some of those features of detecting, connecting, and engaging with users, I can go with the on-premise version, which is Cisco Enterprise, controllers in the MSC, or I can go with the cloud version, which is Cisco Meraki. So that was kind of one core uh, messaging alignment. And then in terms of actual engineering work, we've been working it closely with the ICE and Prime teams. So um, ICE is, of course, a very rich policy management server that has seen tremendous adoption in the marketplace. And uh, some of the feedback we were getting is, OK, this is, this is, this is, these are brilliant technologies, but I want to deploy Meraki Wireless with Cisco ICE. So what we've been doing is we've actually, we have an extensive lab where we're testing ICE and Meraki interoperability, and we've, and we've produced a fairly in-depth guide for which use cases are possible. And we're also asking the market for more feedback on that. So I would say probably 50, 60% of ICE use cases are possible, uh, but there's still more that we're adding over time. So things that we're looking at, for example, radius COA, uh, device profiling. Um, so that's where we've asked customers and partners for feedback on what more would you like to see with regards to ICE and Prime. Uh, Prime is a fairly exciting one. The Prime engineering team did some phenomenal work to actually extract data from the Meraki interfaces using SNMP. And there's some exciting features where you can basically now, in Prime, see all of your Cisco devices as well as all of your Meraki devices. And for your Meraki devices, if you actually click on them, you can launch the Meraki dashboard automatically. So that's very exciting. I think that's compelling. It makes it uh, more of a unified story. It facilitates more joint deployments. Um, and that Prime update will be available later this year. Now, is that going to be a Meraki dashboard inside of Prime as in one product, or is that going to launch a, into the Meraki Cloud website interface? Yeah, great question. So there's going to be two layers. The first layer is a basic layer of uh, information on Meraki devices within Prime. So stuff like device up-down status, SSID status, how many clients are connected. And then you're going to be able to click, and it'll launch the Meraki dashboard in a different browser. 
So you're able to get one layer of information, basic information, then you're able to get that richer layer of information by relying on the um, Rocky dashboard. Is there any plans to integrate into the, the OneCollab form? Yeah, I think, I think we're very open to deeper integration. Yeah. Um, as always, the Meraki philosophy is let's, let's talk to customers, let's talk to partners, let's talk to you guys and see what do you want to see. Um, so if you guys see that being useful, if customers are asking for it, I think we're very open to adding more and more hooks over time. Cool. Thank you. We've also been working closely with the collaboration teams doing things like VoIP integration and testing. Um, so all of our new platforms, for example, are certified on the 7920X series handsets, which have seen great adoption in the VoIP marketplace. So again, I think the core theme here is um, working more and more closely with Cisco teams, making sure that Meraki products can play nice with Cisco products so that we can facilitate more joint deployments, especially as Cisco teams embrace the Meraki product and we get into more and more markets and more and more accounts.